Hey everyone, Mike here and welcome back to the Sim Racing Den. In this video, I'll be doing something a little bit different from my usual Sim Racing hardware reviews and guides. Instead, I'll be taking you behind the scenes and talking all about the equipment I use to film, record audio and edit my YouTube videos. I'm no content creation expert, just an amateur YouTuber who started this channel less than a year ago. However, during this time, I've learned a lot about what techniques and equipment work best for me. If you're looking to start a YouTube channel, upgrade your current gear, or just curious about the equipment I use for filming, then you might find this video helpful or interesting. While I won't be discussing filming or recording techniques, I'll be focusing more on the equipment I use and why I find it useful. Please note that this is not a buyer's guide, and I'm not suggesting that the equipment I use is the best or superior. However, as a beginner, these are some things that have helped improve my content and made the overall content creation process more accessible and enjoyable. If you're not interested in this type of content, feel free to skip it and I'll see you in the next Sim Racing Focus video. For those who are, I'll have affiliate links to everything I mentioned in the video in the description below. As a YouTuber, the first step to creating content is finding a way to film it and there are various options available. When I started making videos, I didn't have a traditional camera. Instead, I used my iPhone 13 Pro, which had a powerful camera built in for a mobile device. Since then, I've upgraded to the iPhone 14 Pro, which has further enhanced the camera's capabilities. Nowadays, it's becoming less of a requirement to have a camera to begin producing content because most of us carry a mobile device with a decent camera in our pockets. While some cameras are better than others, iPhone cameras in particular have continuously improved with each new model and as a longtime Apple user, I've seen the difference firsthand. Although I initially used my iPhone for filming, I recently upgraded to a dedicated camera for various reasons, which I'll discuss shortly. However, when I was starting with iPhone filming, there were a few accessories that helped me enhance the filming process and overall production quality, despite my phone's ability to produce great high quality footage on its own. I discovered the DJI Gimbal to be an incredibly handy tool from the get-go. For those who might not know, a gimbal is a portable instrument designed to stabilize your smartphone while you capture photos or record videos. Equipped with motors and sensors, it effectively neutralizes shakes and movements, leading to polished professional grade shots. Additionally, the gimbal can swivel and incline, facilitating the capture of diverse angles and viewpoints. Although the most recent iPhones already offer remarkable built-in stabilization, the gimbal elevates this feature, making it a breeze to document various subjects. The next accessory that I acquired, which has become my most frequently used and valuable, is a tripod. Any individual involved in video production, be it for content creation or professional purposes, can attest to the indispensability of a tripod. It enables you to secure a mobile device or camera without fretting over stabilization issues. A game changer, however, is a fluid head tripod, which facilitates seamless panning and tilting actions without abrupt or jerky movements. The fluid head incorporates a unique fluid-filled chamber that dampens sudden motions, resulting in smooth and uniform movement. This makes it perfect for capturing footage of my rig or product shots where the phone or camera needs to glide effortlessly. Acquiring this accessory has had a profound impact on my videos, instantly giving them a professional appearance. I went a step further and acquired a camera slider, which facilitates horizontal or vertical movement of a phone or camera along a track. This rail system provides smooth camera transitions, giving my videos a more professional and cinematic aesthetic. Camera sliders are available in an array of lengths and sizes, ranging from compact units like mine or more robust models employed in professional filmmaking. My slider operates manually, but I'm contemplating an upgrade to an electronic variant for greater precision and reproducible camera maneuvers. The slider has proven useful for specific shots that demand uniform and steady motion, such as circling around a product during review videos. Despite my iPhone's ability to record remarkable videos, I chose to upgrade to a dedicated camera, the Sony ZV-E10, which offered a multitude of benefits. A specialized camera can introduce an array of supplementary features and capabilities that can enrich your video content. I'll outline some reasons for my decision to adopt a dedicated camera for producing my YouTube videos, followed by an explanation of why I picked the esteemed Sony model. Dedicated cameras usually possess larger sensors, leading to higher resolution or superior low light performance, resulting in crisper, more detailed footage with accurate colors. Specialized cameras typically provide a broader selection of lenses and accessories, such as external microphones and lighting, enabling me to tailor my setup according to specific requirements. 
Dedicated cameras offer greater control over exposure, focus, and other settings, facilitating the achievement of creative shots and effects. Following extensive research and a recommendation from fellow sim racing YouTuber Aero Veloce, I opted for the Sony ZV-E10, a popular choice among other YouTubers and vloggers. The ZV-E10 enables me to film in 4K at 30 frames per second, my preferred setting, as it delivers the desired appearance with exceptional detail and clarity. The ZV-E10 features a 3-inch, very angled touchscreen that flips out and rotates, simplifying the process of framing shots of products or myself. The camera includes a built-in directional microphone for capturing clear audio. However, I seldom use it as I have a dedicated microphone for superior audio quality, which I'll discuss later in this video. Nevertheless, the camera offers a line-in port for microphones, enabling direct audio recording for my videos if needed. Another reason I selected the ZV-E10 is its compatibility with Sony's E-mount lenses, providing numerous options and the flexibility to choose suitable lenses for various tasks. I primarily use the Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens as they excel in low light conditions and produce the desired look for my videos. As my first ever camera, I'm still learning about its features. However, I find it relatively user friendly due to its straightforward and intuitive interface making it accessible to beginners like myself. The Sony ZV-E10 has been a pleasure to use thanks to its top-notch video quality, advanced autofocus and other features. Although I'm still mastering its capabilities, I've already observed improvements in my video's appearance and I hope you have as well. Incorporating several secondary cameras has been beneficial for filming various types of videos from my sim racing rig. The first of these is the Razer Keo Pro Ultra Webcam. While webcams are typically associated with video calls, this particular camera was designed with streamers and YouTubers in mind. Capable of capturing high quality 4K footage at up to 60 frames per second, it offers multiple recording modes and a large sensor that performs well in low light environments. Measuring 3 by 2.5 inches, it's one of the largest webcams I've ever encountered, surpassing even my previous Kio Pro. Its wide angle lens makes it resemble a mirrorless camera more than other webcams I've used. Razer claims that the Kio Pro Ultra's sensor is larger than any other webcam. The combination of a large sensor and a fast 1.7 aperture allows more light into the camera, improving low light performance. I primarily use this camera to record videos while seated in my rig, enabling me to demonstrate items like a steering wheel. Eventually I plan to start streaming with it and its quality is so impressive that I may use it as a secondary camera for filming alternative shots. The last camera in my arsenal is the GoPro Hero 10, which I acquired to film POV style videos while racing in my rig. Its compact size allows me to attach it to my head, offering a driver's perspective. I'm assuming you watch other sim racing YouTubers and you may have seen similar videos. For example, Will from Boosted Media produces exceptional videos in his ultimate rig, surrounded by three 65 inch screens with his GoPro mounted onto a bicycle helmet. I'm still exploring the best ways to capture such videos, but recreating this style has been very enjoyable. Aside from POV videos, I have discovered other uses for the GoPro, such as attaching it to my rig using a mount from SimCore, allowing me to film various rig components while on camera. Recently, I used it to film my Ace Attack Invicta pedals while discussing accessories on my Razer webcam. Due to the GoPro's small footprint and mounting options, I anticipate finding additional creative uses for it when filming content on my rig. Since we're discussing cameras, it's an appropriate time to address lighting. In my early videos, I lacked knowledge about proper lighting conditions and often neglected it, focusing mainly on ensuring that my subject was adequately illuminated. However, I eventually discovered that better control over lighting significantly improved image quality and imparted a more cinematic feel to my shots. After watching numerous YouTube tutorials on lighting scenes, I decided to invest in a basic studio lighting kit the GVM RGB LED Video Lighting Kit. The kit comprises three lights, each featuring a 800D RGB video light panel that can produce adjustable temperature or colored light for various shots. The lights come with a built-in LCD that enables me to modify the mode's brightness and color. Furthermore, a phone app allows for more convenient control over the lights, making it easy to adjust the scene without moving from my position. The kit also includes adjustable tripods for each light, simplifying shot setup. One of the aspects I appreciate about these lights is their lightweight and portable design, making setup and disassembly a breeze when not in use. While there are undoubtedly more advanced lighting options available, 
These lights have noticeably enhanced my videos, proving easy to use and space efficient in my compact den. One accessory that has been particularly helpful for recording talking head style videos is a teleprompter. I prefer to write scripts for my videos beforehand as it helps me effectively convey my thoughts, ensures I don't miss any details and guarantees accurate information, especially during hardware reviews. However, when filming these videos while trying to read a script from my computer to monitor, I noticed my eyes weren't focused on the camera, resulting in an awkward viewing experience. As someone already uneasy on camera, I sought solutions to make filming such videos more comfortable and discovered a teleprompter attachment that can be mounted on my camera tripod. The teleprompter uses an iPad to reflect my script's text onto a piece of reflective glass that's positioned in front of the camera. The glass is angled in such a way that the text isn't visible on camera, but I can clearly see it, allowing me to maintain eye contact with the camera lens. This clever device comes with a dedicated iPad app, which I can use to upload my script and even control the text speed and direction using a wireless remote. While it takes some time to set up and dismantle, the teleprompter undoubtedly makes filming such videos more manageable, reducing the number of takes and post-production editing required. Audio quality is crucial for content creation, even more so than video. I realized my initial videos needed improved audio earlier on, so I transitioned from my iPhone's built-in microphone to a dedicated one. My first choice was the Blue Yeti, a popular USB microphone for PC and Mac users, commonly used for podcasting, streaming, and of course content creation. However, I wasn't entirely satisfied with the sound and opted for the Shure MV7 instead, which offered my desired audio quality and vocal tone. This microphone has become one of the most valuable pieces of equipment, producing higher quality and richer sound compared to the Blue Yeti. Its popularity among YouTubers and podcasters is no surprise. The Shure MV7 can be connected to my Mac and PC for live recording or voiceovers, and it performs well in various environments without much sound deadening. Despite lacking sound isolation, foam, or panels in my office, the microphone minimizes unwanted noise pickup and only minor noise reduction is needed in post-production. For mounting the Shure MV7, I use two Rode boom arms, the PSA for my desk setup and the PSA Plus that can be attached and detached from my SIM rig using an included clamp. This allows me to move the microphone between my desk and SIM rig as needed. I also use a pop filter attached to the microphone to further enhance voice recordings, reducing plosive and popping sounds. I also recently acquired a wireless lapel microphone, the Lark M1, which I haven't yet used in a video but intend to provide more recording flexibility in various locations of my den. While the audio quality doesn't match the Shure MV7, I'm working on optimizing it in post-production for more versatile audio recording in future videos. Regarding audio recording, I use a free tool called Audacity for voiceovers. It's great for capturing recordings, editing, and applying effects in EQ to enhance the final result. The improvement is significant, resulting in a more professional sound. Next, let's talk about the tools I use for production, editing, and post-production. My primary computer for editing, recording audio, and managing media is the Apple Mac Studio. It's equipped with the powerful M1 Ultra chip. It's able to handle 4K footage seamlessly and is used for all channel related tasks, as well as productivity tasks for my day job. The Mac Studio is convenient, offering numerous ports on the back and an SD card slot at the front for easy footage transfer. For editing, I use Final Cut Pro. While I initially used the built-in iMovie app, I quickly discovered its limitations. Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere offer a wealth of creative possibilities, which can be overwhelming. However, I continually learn new techniques and improving my editing skills with each video. For specific videos, I also employ the popular OBS, Open Broadcast Software, a favorite tool among streamers and creatives. I typically use OBS when recording from my rig, capturing my screen or mixing multiple cameras. It's a versatile tool for recording and capturing gameplay or racing videos, which I plan to produce more of in the future. In conclusion, that covers all the equipment I'm currently using. As I continue to learn about filming techniques and discover better ways to create videos, I'll likely make some updates and upgrades. As mentioned earlier, all the equipment links can be found in the description below. Some of these links are Amazon affiliate links, and if you choose to make a purchase through them, I receive a small commission, which ultimately helps support the channel. However, if you prefer not to use these links, that's completely fine. The choice is yours, and your support is always appreciated. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up as it helps recommend my content to other like-minded viewers. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, stay safe and enjoy your racing.